My name is Werner Mako, and today we're going to use a SureResult D3 Ultra handheld ultrasound to look for a tendinopathy of the tibialis posterior tendon, uh, also called the posterior tibial tendon. Now this tendon courses just posterior to the medial malleolus, where the uh, blood flow to it is a little bit deficient right there as it bends around the corner, and bending around the corner is typically where it gets injured. Um, it's estimated that about 85% of these pathologies actually get misdiagnosed as something else. So this is a very commonly missed diagnosis um, because the pain can radiate and, and be misdiagnosed as a plantar fasciitis, for example, because it does course basically to the navicular region uh, on the plantar surface, um, or it could be misdiagnosed as Achilles pain. Um, if it, there's a full rupture, it can cause an acquired flat foot because it's one of these structures that sort of maintains the arch of the foot. So I think this is an important scan to do uh, if you're evaluating for plantar fascia, if you're evaluating the, the Achilles, if their pain is sort of medial in any way, um, then I would evaluate the structure. Now in theory, if you're more experienced and more confident, you can follow it right down to its insertion, although that's not typically where the problem is. Uh, you can evaluate the spring ligament, uh, which is sometimes uh, pathologic, um, along with the posterior tibial tendon. But since we're just doing a quick scan today, what, what's the one place you're going to check? You're going to check just posterior to the medial malleolus. Okay, let's go. So we'll need some gel here. So it's a shallow structure, so I'm using high frequency. Uh, this goes up to 10 megahertz here. And this is a structure you're going to want to evaluate both in short axis and long axis. So here, and you will have to manipulate your transducer a lot so that you can actually see the tendon because there's going to be a lot of anisotropy. You can turn compound imaging on or off. Off is going to give you um, a little bit better frame rate. On is going to give you better pictures. So depending on which one you find is more helpful, of course, you can just keep on switching it on or off. So there's the tendon. It's right up against the bone, right? So here it is right there. So we can try to follow it a little bit as it goes behind. Sometimes you'll see fluid around the tendon. Could be a tenosynovitis, but can also be fluid from a tear. We can just follow it up. And we can follow it past a little bit again. See how dark it gets from anisotropy, so I really have to tilt the transducer back and forth. Make sure it's not, it's still there. And let's rotate this 90 degrees along the path of the tendon. So there's the tendon there. So what we're looking for is we are looking for basically a tear, a discontinuity of the fibers, and possibly a tendinosis if it's hypochoic and thickened. But that can be difficult to determine due to the uh, nature of this tendon how tricky it is to, to get a good picture of it without anisotropy. Um, you can also, of course, compare with the other side, um, so you have an asymptomatic and a symptomatic uh, for comparison. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Cheers.